can see it is still a very bright sunny afternoon here in London, Ontario. I am recording this on a Thursday afternoon. So I hope to participate myself with tomorrow's Friday night stitch in from six until midnight. But there was some talk about possibly going to the drive-in tomorrow night. I think John was hoping to see the new Han Solo movie at the drive-in. So we'll have to see how that affects the plans. But I am here now and stitching away. It's so funny, it is so bright, you can see right through my fabric. And at least my hand is at the back there, helping to provide some coverage so that when I am pulling the needle, putting the needle back in, I can see where I'm going, where I'm headed. Okay, so I think I'm going to have to do this in sections. I don't want to carry my thread because there is going to be another red section here, but there's a blue section in between, and I don't want to take the chance that my thread might not be covered by the blue because there is definitely a square in between the blue and the section of red. So I'm going to end that thread. My eyes are acting up a bit today. I think the combination of the bright sunshine and I have my floor frame a little bit further away from me than normal today because of the camera placement. My progressive lenses are not quite in the right spot, but I'll fiddle with it as I go and we'll just do our best. There we go. So if you're new around these here parts, this is a Stitch With Me video. That's all I'm going to be doing today is stitching. I am working on a pattern by Sampler Cove and this is called Amtrak. Now apparently the story behind the name Amtrak, it has nothing to do with the rail station, rail station, the rail system, I think you all know what I mean, in the States, it apparently is a conglomeration of two names of friends of the designer herself. And it explains that on the back of the pattern. But that, I think, is the page that I lost or was destroyed. I, I You may remember... I showed this before my pattern I dumped a glass of red wine on it about three or four years ago fortunately the pattern was separate from where my fabric was so it's just on the pattern and I have a funny feeling that that last page where the thread requirements was probably destroyed and so that's probably why I don't have it but it is a beautiful, beautiful piece. I love the tininess of the stitches on this 25 count even weave. I'm using a lovely old silk and the color is rich and vibrant and just makes me want to never ever stop. I would stop to maybe make a cup of coffee and then continue on. Wouldn't that just be a dream? One day. I love getting messages from people who are retired and they say, that's me. That's what I get to do every day. And that makes me so happy to hear that because I know that will be me one day. One day I will be retired and... I will have full days 
in a row where I get to spend time in the pursuit of crafting goodness. Won't that just be magical? That's going to be really good. Okay, so I think I'm going to switch over from the red. Benefit to having 10 needles on my needle minder. I've got one loaded up over here with my gray thread. And now I'm gonna leave the one with the red thread over at the side and I'm gonna re-thread a third needle with the blue silk. My dad is still outside. He's been going back and forth from our little furnace room to the backyard where the air conditioning unit is, back and forth, back and forth. He has been working so hard yesterday and today. So hopefully he'll be finished up soon and he won't be too tired tonight. But I have a lovely meal planned for tonight to say thank you. I am going to cook a salmon fillet. Does anyone else? I'm sure lots of you do that, but one of our favorite, favorite sort of special meals is to buy a salmon fillet whole. I mean, it's, it's filleted, it's a fillet. I'm not gonna do the fish myself. I'm not ready to go on MasterChef or anything like that. You know, that's an aside right there. I'm gonna just go off on a little tangent and I, I'm gonna try really hard to remember to go back to where I was, but you know, I think I've mentioned by now that one of our favorite shows is MasterChef Australia. And, be oh, that's not working today. Let's go over here. So, I think this, I've chosen a dull needle. Not a dull needle, but one with a rounded tip. I have a feeling this is a Bowen needle. And I always struggle when I'm doing 25 count one over one to do my Bargello tuck at the back to bury my thread because it's so small and snug that a needle with a slightly duller point doesn't like to sew in the, sew in the ends. However, neither here nor there. My first tangent was MasterChef Australia. And I'm constantly amazed. And, and oh, by the way, we are quite behind. So if you've been watching the show, don't post any spoilers or any information because we have only just started watching it we are at least two weeks behind so don't post anything because we like to watch we it takes us a really long time to watch the season because there's something ri like ridiculous like 60 to 80 episodes per season it's amazing oh it's such a good show but we're constantly laughing at the contestants who come on and you know they've never made ice cream or they've never filleted a fish and this is their first time doing it and you think you're going on a cooking show surely you've seen it before you know that you're going to have to fillet a fish you know that you're going to make ice cream why have you not practiced it before you go on the show oh and i just think that is the either the height of self-assuredness in your ability or complete foolishness <laughs> I don't know which I don't know I think maybe it's a combination of both but anyways that was my little aside about filleting a fish I do not know how to fillet a fish but I am not about to be a contestant for MasterChef so I buy my salmon already filleted. It's a special meal, and I am going to cook that for dinner tonight, along with broccoli that my children, my children will, if I put butter and salt on broccoli, they will eat it like it's candy. So we'll have broccoli and maybe some small roasted potatoes on the side. So hopefully my dad will think that that is a small yet satisfying reward for his labors today. Uh, let's see, what am I doing here? I better pay attention because I don't want to have to rip this out. Ripping out one over one is never very fun. 
So I think, yeah, I'm in the right spot. Okay. I had a great question the other day from someone who said, who wanted to know what audiobook I was listening to. The other day I mentioned I was, when my family was away, I was going to turn on my audiobook and have some quality time with my audiobook and my stitching for the day. And she was wondering which audiobook I was listening to. And then she said, you know, it would be really nice if you would discuss what you like to do while you're stitching. And I agree because I love to hear what other people are listening to or doing while they're stitching because, you know, we all love to watch floss tube, but we all do lots of other things as well. And so I thought maybe I would talk about a few of the things that I like to listen to or that I like to do. And maybe in the comments below, you can leave some suggestions for things that you like to watch or listen to. All right, so that's it for the blue there. And I can't go anywhere without carrying it. So I think what I'm going to do, the next bit of blue, obviously one of these little guys is over here, but I don't wanna carry the thread across the back because you can see with the light can you actually see that? You can see I'm moving my thread back here. If I don't bury that thread, you'll see that through the fabric. And so I'm going to want to bury that. So what I'm going to do, this part is attached to that bottom red corner. So I'm going to go ahead and anchor my thread back. You know what? I'm going to have to switch needles. This needle is just too, it's not pointy enough. Let's try this one. I'm gonna test it out before I thread my needle. Oh yeah, that, this one's a bit better, okay. Different needles for different tasks. And yes, I know I licked my thread. I have needle threaders. I've been gifted needle threaders. I am the wonderfully lucky recipient of needle threaders, but it's getting into the habit of using them. Now, why is this being, I tested it. You'd think it would not give me so much trouble. Okay, so I've buried my thread. So you can see now I have carried it up here and over here and my, my next stitch is going to be coming up over here. So when I do that, that length of thread is now hidden. It's still attached. All good. So we can travel, travel all the way over. So the audiobook I was listening to, and I've talked about this one before, is Sherlock Holmes. And it is read by Stephen Fry. And I used it, it was available for one credit on audible.com. I love, I love audible.com. They don't know who the heck I am. So I'm not, you know, there's, there's no, what's the word? And as Gerald says, you're all shouting the word at me. There's no, uh, they don't know who I am. There's no benefit to me to tell you that I like them. That's, that's what, you know what I mean? So audible.com, we have a yearly subscription where I think we pay for 12 credits a year. And we listen to a lot more than 12 credits a year. But what we do is they have a daily deal that they send in an email. And quite frequently, we will find something that we like in one of their daily deals. And I mean, they'll offer an audiobook for for five dollars or less sometimes you can get one for three dollars and that's a that's a really great source for where I find things just to you know put in my ears and listen to so uh Sherlock Holmes read by Stephen Fry it is about 60 hours plus of listening to a fabulous fabulous narrator. I mean, he is just wonderful. You can tell that it is really something that he enjoys this, uh, um, 
Arthur, Sir Arthur Conan Doyle's literature, and his pronunciation is fabulous. His, you know, it's just, it's, it's a great, great listen if you're into that kind of thing. My taste is very eclectic, so I will listen to, you know, Sherlock for a few hours, and then I'll take a break and listen to a murder mystery, and I enjoy them equally as much. I know, I know Sherlock is also a mystery, but like I'm talking about a modern sort of, you know, not a, not horror, but does that make sense? But then I'll, I'll listen to fluff like Nora Roberts. That's pretty fluffy, but still it's just, it's an enjoyable experience to have somebody telling you a story in your ears. And I love it. I love audiobooks. I also like to listen to podcasts. I have mentioned this podcast before, but I know that, you know, not everybody listens to these rambly bits of Friday off the grid. So if you're new here or you're just listening to me uh, for the first time or you haven't, you haven't uh, watched the other episodes, a podcast that I have recommended before in the past is called Craft Lit. And that's one word. Um, craft is capitalized and lit it. So it's capital C R A F T L I T all, all one word. And the host of craft lit is a woman named Heather Ordover. And she has one of the most wonderful voices to listen to. It's like, oh, I, I can't even describe it. She's funny. She's incredibly bright and she is uh, a former teacher, a former English teacher. And so Craft Lit, what it is, is it, she goes through a book of classic literature with you. And, you know, at the beginning, there's some crafty talk. So she's a knitter. Uh, she, she does a lot more than knit. She's, she's sort of multi craftual like many of us are. And so she'll have a bit of a crafty discussion at the beginning, and then she'll get into the few chapters of the book that are part of that episode. And so she will talk to you about what to listen for and, you know, help you understand the story and, you know, the, the, the things behind the story that you wish you knew as an English student back in the day when you were studying English yourself in high school. I can only imagine what a fabulous teacher she was for her students when she was teaching in school. And, and you know what? I am so far behind on Craftlet. Like, we're talking years behind because I have a funny quirk where I don't like to listen to things that I really like. I don't like to listen to, I, I like to listen to the whole thing because I feel like I'm missing out on something if I skip ahead to new episodes. So I am, I am a couple of years behind on Craft Lit. So as far as I know, Heather Ordover is still recording new episodes and she's still following the same format, but I am like two years out of date. So she could very well have moved on to greener pastures. I don't know. All I know is that she is fabulous and she is well worth a listen and a subscribe to. You can find her podcast through iTunes and you, I believe you can also, she has a website. You can uh, listen to her podcast directly online. I think it's www.craftlit.com. Anyways, highly, highly recommend her. I love love listening to Heather. And she was really the first podcaster I really listened to. I loved uh, audio podcasts were sort of my thing well before YouTube. I, I really only got into YouTube when my friend Adrian suggested, you know, we should, there are these knitting podcasts that I watch and you'd really like them. And well, that just, as we know, opened up a whole a whole new world of, of community, online community. So Craftlet is definitely something that I love. 
Other things that I like to listen to that I subscribe to, I like Radio Lab. Um, it is a sort of scientific podcast. It is it it's scientific but also social, like hard to describe, but it's wonderful. So Radio Lab, that's a really good one. Uh, I like to listen to This American Life. Again, I'm very behind on This American Life, but I like to listen to that. Now, what am I doing here? I guess I can just copy the one right across the way, can't I? How many more? So one, two, three, if I do three. Yeah, okay, so three more. Let's not lose count, shall we? You guys can, well, you're not looking at my stitching anyways, you're looking at your own. So don't bother counting mine. Uh, yeah, This American Life, Radio Lab. I also like The Moth, The Moth Podcast. Very, very good storytelling, sometimes some quite emotional storytelling that I will admit has made me cry. I've teared up, made me laugh, made me cry. So the moth, what else? Audiobooks. Now, television shows. When I'm sewing, I either like to watch floss tube or knitting podcasts. Now, since most of you watching me are stitchers, and I know there's there are some knitters out there and also new knitters, so I'm going to suggest a few knitting podcasts in case you haven't heard of them. If you're a new knitter, and you want to try watching a few knitting podcasts as well as adding them to your floss tube list. Uh, some favorites are uh, A Homespun House. That is Molly and Molly at A Homespun House. She was living in Germany and I believe they are in the process of moving back to the United States. She is an indie yarn dyer and just a lovely, lovely, soft-spoken person. I, I always enjoy her episodes. Um, other knitting podcasts. Oh, the names of them. They're all in my subscription list and they've all, oh, Little Bobbins. I really like Little Bobbins. She's fun to listen to. Again, soft-spoken, but just an amazing knitter. The stuff she produces is gorgeous. She has some beautiful sock patterns out. Uh, the Grocery Girls, for something a little funny, a little different. The Grocery Girls are Canadian, so another reason why I like them. Uh, what else? Well, of course, there's the Fiber Friends, which a certain someone, someone may, might be involved with the Fiber Friends. I don't know who, though. Let's see, what else? TV shows. Gilmore Girls is always a favorite. And I like, oh, I got hooked into Lost in Space. Could not stop watching that. So I have one episode left, and I saved that to watch with Nicholas because he watched most of it with my parents, except for the very last episode. So he's going to watch that with me, hopefully this weekend. So Lost in Space, we just started watching Cosmos with Neil deGrasse Tyson with, and we started watching that as a family and that is quite enjoyable. We like that. So I guess that's, I guess that's about it. MasterChef Australia has started. So any TV time viewing, TV viewing time that we have over the next few months, we will probably be watching uh, Australian MasterChef. We, oh, also, of course, the Great British Baking Show. Love that. Love that. So, anyways. I'm trying to think. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There we go. The stitches are so small. They're so tiny and so perfect. I love them. So that's what I like. That's what I like to listen to and watch. So why don't you leave in the comments below 
what you like. And maybe somebody else can discover something new from something that you recommend. Four, five, six, seven, one more. One more. Let's just make sure, yep, we're good. Okay, there we go. Now let's end that thread. Oh, this one's a bit snug as well. Not sure what's up with my needles today. Normally I don't have that much trouble. I probably keep choosing the same needle. I think I'm going for a different one, but it's actually probably the same one that I keep picking up. So let's try a different one. Let's see. Yeah, that one, that one I think might work. Okay, so I'm gonna tuck that one there so that I don't mix it up with the other ones. Let's get another length of blue silk. Pretty luxurious to work with silk. Mm -mm, I had that and I pulled it right out. There we go. All right, now, where am I at here? Actually, let's come from this side. So I think I mentioned in my Whip Mania video 24, the one where I had my dad at the beginning. You know, he was so funny. He didn't even hesitate when I asked him if he wanted to, if I could take a little video with him. He, right away, he said, sure. And he was, uh, he was pretty confident, but no nerve, no nerves at all, which was kind of, it was, was really quite sweet. So it was nice to do that with him. There we go. So I think I mentioned where I was going with that was that my studio recital is this weekend on Sunday. No, that's not, is that right? On the outside? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. And so my studio recital is on Sunday and I have to head over to the church that I have, why did I do that? That was silly. I have rented a church location for an hour on the Sunday afternoon and I need to go and sign the contract and pay the bill. Otherwise, they won't let us use the space. It's funny, funny how that works. Money in exchange for services. And my students have been pre busily preparing all of their pieces and there's a few nervous children, my son included. I have managed to convince him to perform his piano solo. So that's kind of sweet. I think that'll be fun. And that's on Sunday, which also coincides with high tea, which I am super excited about. Wait until you see what I am starting on Sunday. I can't wait. I, I literally can't wait. I have been eyeing this piece in my stash for over a year. I've had it kitted up for over a year. And I am so excited because I love it so much. I can't wait. There, I got that knot out. There we go. And I think... I think I'm going to have to wrap this up soon because I'm looking at my watch and I have to get over to the church before the lady closes the office and it's a bit of a drive it's way across town 
So I am going to not be able to finish this length of thread. However, you can guarantee tonight when I come back upstairs, after all my other chores are done, that I can't wait to finish a little bit more work on this project tonight. Thank you for joining me. Thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing, liking the video, and leaving me all of your amazing, amazingly kind comments. I read them all, and I appreciate every one of them. And I hope you have a great weekend. I'll see you tomorrow for a quick Whip Mania video. And I will see you on Sunday for high tea. And I hope you'll join me. Happy stitching. I'll see you later.